So, you've learned that GraphQL supports two main operations, query and mutation. Now, let's dig in a little deeper to see how these work. You can traverse through GraphQL to build your query in the shape you want. For example, you can query a collection and its meta field. From there, you can query the products within the collection. You can go even further and query individual fields within each product, even variants within those products. The most basic unit you'll work with in GraphQL is called an object. For example, a product is an object. In its most basic form, GraphQL fetches fields on objects. A field can also be an object of its own, which contains more fields. Don't worry, we'll dive into this further later in the course. Different object types define the fields or information that can be requested. So since our object type here is a product, we could query or mutate any information related to this product. Let's walk through an example of how to use query. Let's say you're building an on-site landing page to market the launch of a new shoe. You'll need to pull the shoe name or product title, description, and product image to build an effective landing page. Next, let's say you're building a landing page on your online store for a new summer collection. You'll need to pull product titles, descriptions, and images for a whole list of products. Since you're now querying for multiple objects, you'll need to query a connection. Connections contain edges and nodes. Nodes represent entities, and edges represent relationships between entities. So, to get information about the products in a collection, you could query either edges or nodes associated with the collection. We'll dive deeper into this later in the course. Now, let's look at how this works using a mutation instead of a query. Remember, mutation allows you to modify server-side data. Let's continue with our example. Since launching the new shoe line, your client has been flooded with customers asking about whether the shoes are made of real leather. To address this, they've decided to update the entire product database to include a list of material. Your input data here is to add a product meta field. This will then update the product itself. Then it'll return the meta field ID. We just covered a lot. So let's do a quick recap. You've learned that GraphQL operates using queries and mutations. Queries let you fetch exactly the data you need, whether it's a single field or information nested further down in its network structure. On the other hand, mutations allow you to modify data on the server, like updating product information. Finally, remember that GraphQL's network structure gives you the flexibility to shape your data requests for your specific needs. We'll dive deeper into these concepts as we move forward in this learning pathway. So stay tuned for hands-on activity labs to help you start putting this into practice.